Welcome back to our home renovation addition or model thing, whatever this thing is that we are still doing. This time we're doing the uh, the bookend cabinetry is what I'm gonna call it. So we have the appliance garage, which we built last time. We'll be setting that one. That is uh, on one end of the run. And then on the other end of the cabinet run along the wall is the fridge right here, which needs a fridge surround. So we're gonna build the surround, get this corner all figured out and ready to go and then we'll set this corner and the other cabinet uh, in this video as well. So from, I guess it was like the first install video of the cabinetry, I started on this run over here and I got to this cabinet and sort of planning for the fridge space. Um, the fridge surround has uh, three inch styles on either side, but what I realized is that we have a casing going over here. So we'll have a casing going into the style so to keep the casings, keep the styles on the fridge symmetrical, I want to make the, the right side a little wider than the left side so that when my casing comes in, what you actually see is symmetrical. So that meant that this cabinet here is a little too wide to allow me to do that. So the first thing we're going to do today is head down to the shop, make a new face frame for this cabinet. We're going to shrink it down by one inch. I did something a little differently this time, and I, just, I temporarily left this section on here, and then I will cut this flush after it's glued up. The one problem I had last time is it was really challenging to make sure this thing was square uh, during the glue up because it's very easy for it to do one of these things, and at least with this little extension on here, it makes it a lot easier to check for square and make sure this thing is actually even and not uh, racked into a parallelogram. And this little bit down here is just so I can check the diagonals with the tape. One thing you can't do with this is check to this corner because the styles are different widths. So you won't get an even reading no matter what you do going this way. So at least now I can come all the way out to here and I can check my actual diagonals on top of checking all the, uh, all the openings with the square. So. All right, so now on to the refrigerator surround. I'm gonna start by making the left side, which you can kind of see right here. It's a panel with a, I guess a thick edge on it essentially. This uh, surround is the same depth as this cap at 26 inches. And we have the same like show sizes as before, as we have the backsplash again coming in this way. The front part of this panel is gonna have the front of that surround applied to it. So this style is only three and a quarter for that full four inch show on the finish. And we'll do the same thing down here, a four inch piece. We'll make it five so it sits below the countertop and the countertop butts up into it. And then the same thing up here, we'll have a five inch piece. So I have an inch covered by crown and a four inch show. So I'll start again with the center panel area, the V groove. That's gonna be the same size as this one, 17 and three quarter by 49 and 5 is tall.
So that is the completed, I guess, side of the, uh, the fridge surround. I'm gonna wrap around the corner here and start working on figuring out, you know, the actual front face where the actual fridge goes because you kinda wanna make sure that's all correct so when the fridge goes in, it actually goes in. So as a bit of a reminder, this is what the face of the fridge is gonna look like. So it has this sort of fully built-in look where we have the two styles, which are three inches wide. We have the, uh, the top rail, the look of a bottom rail, and then this paneling here, which is actually applied to the face of the fridge. The fridge is a panel-ready fridge, so in, in other words, there is no actual show face on the door. The door receives some kind of panel that we manufacture in the shop, and the panel is going to be this six-panel V-groove with this diamond thing in the middle, and then a uh, almost like faux toe kick uh, applique down here. The look of this door is going to be basically the same exact look as the pantry door, which is opposite of it on the other wall. Uh, this one's just um, six inches narrower, but the exact same details. We have a faux baseboard on this side, so it actually continues uh, across, and then the door when it's closed, the jam is essentially the expansion gap of the V-groove, so this door is sort of hidden in the wall. So that detail, is mirrored back up here on the fridge. So this is where we want to go to the, uh, the instructions and just make sure that uh, our opening that we're planning for is actually going to be you know, correct. So we have the 36 inch column, so the width of the opening from here to here needs to be 36, and then the overall height of the unit, so the opening height from the floor to I guess you know the bottom of where the top of the opening thing is is gonna be 84. So there is our, uh, our right side, just a simple L, and I haven't cut this to length yet, but what I'll do is I'll cut it to be about an eighth of an inch longer than this one, so that when it's in place, I can actually cut it to the right height, so that if there is a dip or a rise in the floor, I can account for that in this piece here. The top piece is right here. This is also not cut to length quite yet, but when I cut this one to length, I'll set a stop block for it, and I'll cut a second piece that's the same length as this that I can use during the install as a spreader. I can put it down the floor so I can make sure that these two legs are parallel all the way from the ceiling you know, down to the floor. So for this connector thing, a uh, couple of fun things. So <laughs> I want this to be uh, removable. And I'm, gonna try and, I'm trying to think of like how I want to install this uh, because if I have this piece like in here all together as one unit, it's gonna be kind of annoying and difficult to like get it set and get it in there and not like have any of the paint seams crack from being flexed or whatever, because this thing would be pretty floppy. And I mean, you can get it to not be floppy, but you gotta, ha you, I would have to put a lot of structure and extra little pieces in here to hold things temporarily. So I'm gonna attach this 
up top with the, uh, the domino connectors, mostly because I've been uh, wanting to try these and see how they work. That's gonna allow me to have this piece be removable and I can put it back together in approximately, hopefully, as close to the same orientation as it is as I have it now, as I'm trying to like finish prep it, flush it out, and uh, all of that. The biggest sort of issue with having this be completely removable is that if I have these with three separate pieces, I will end up with a seam in the in the paint line. I'll have a I'll have a paint line seam with the two pieces coming together, which I don't really want. So what I will probably end up doing is I'll put this whole thing together with the connectors, get it all sanded, finished, prepped, and you know, sanded flush and everything. And then I will leave one of them attached, probably this one, throughout the entire finishing and install process so that the seam between this piece and this piece stays perfect with the paint. And then I'll have a small, I'll have a four inch seam that you'll be able to see, you know, up in here somewhere. I'm not super worried about it. I don't really want to, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. But that's a difficulty with this whole seamless thing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty easy to have seams show up and I don't really want them to show up. So that's sort of my plan right now is that this will be a two piece thing. This will be fixed up there permanently or semi-permanently removable if, if needed. And then this will be able to be attached in place after I make sure it fits the wall nicely and get it cut to length and all that. Then I can slide it into the top piece and attach it forever. So we'll see how that, uh, that kind of goes. But anyway, I'm going to get chopping and cutting some of the more domino things, I guess. <laughs> So I think that's kind of it. That's, that's the fridge surround. And the fridge just kind of goes into the hole and uh, we put a door on it and it looks like a big cabinet with a big door on it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just clean this thing up and get it off the paint. I think one little thing I'll do to make it last fragile here on this connection is I'll put a little brace, a temporary brace in here so when I'm painting it and when I'm moving it and transporting it, just to help support this because if this flexes too much, I'll end up with a crack line here uh, in the paint. So it's a little thing there and now it's time for some paint, I guess.
All right, this thing here is back from paint. So this should go pretty quickly. Just a matter of uh, taking this thing apart, chopping down all the horizontal pieces and putting it all back together. It's an inch narrower now, or it will be an inch narrower and it should be. It's just like easy, just one more thing to do. Almost just like that. <laughs> that cabin is now a little bit narrower. So that's ready to go in. Let's uh let's go set some cabinets. Who touched this with the dirty hands? Now in theory with this one, I didn't touch the feet. So I should be able to just put this back in place and it should be exactly perfect as it was when I um, leveled it out originally. But I will uh, get the laser set up and we'll double check, make sure it's uh, still the same, and figure out again where it's supposed to go along the wall. The scribe lines are still there on the box. I obviously don't have lines on the face frame anymore because uh, those scribe lines are gone. Looks like the back is still pretty good. The front must have dropped a little bit. So we'll make that quick adjustment and scribe our foot. Or maybe just a little bit behind the line of that cabinet. So I can bring this out from the wall. Maybe not even an eighth of an inch or something.
Oh, the math worked. Hey, Dad. What are you doing? I'm putting a fridge surround. What? I'm putting this fridge surround thing. What fridge? The fridge? Look, it goes right there in that hole. Oh, bye. Okay, that's... That's where it's going to be, I guess. I can go that way. A uh, tiny little bit if I want to. But I don't think I really want to. <laughs> wow. Okay, then. Let's just see how it translates to the wall. I'm just going to go this way with it a little bit. Here. In case there's a twist in the panel or something. So it's like right there in the corner down here. And then up top. Just a oh, tiny bit away. Too. Like the tiniest too. bit. Um, so obviously this does not land on a stud. The next stud's back in here. It's uh, nine inches away. So what I was planning on doing was making some blocks that attach to the stud and go over and tie into here. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to just check it for plumb in this direction real quick. Moving the laser over there and we'll see where that's at. And then I'll just put my blocks in and just start attaching it in place. Okay, so I'm not super happy with this side still because it's not plumb enough. There's This is... You know, you're eight feet long, so a little bit out of plumb is going to translate to a lot. And down here, you can really see it, at least I can in person. I have a two-inch step here at the bottom, which was supposed to be. And then up here, it's like two and, two and three-sixteenths. So the whole thing needs to tip back that way. But I can't go back any further because at the top there, we're contacting the wall. That's holding it from tipping back any further. So I'm going to work on getting that leg installed, and then as part of the installation of that, this has to come back out again so I can attach that. I will clip that, uh, that top corner back a little bit so I can actually move the whole thing back in towards the wall and uh, straighten up that line at the bottom. One nice thing here, again, is that if you were like going into a wall like this and you actually cared about that look, that was your finished look, you want to scribe the panel to the wall, in this case, we don't really care because the tile comes in here and that'll cover, you know, any gap that we have right now. So, at least that makes it a little bit easier. Okay, that's kind of in there. I'm going to finalize the position and fasten this side. This is just dangling here, so once that's in there, I can put the laser on here and make sure this is in plane with this one so there's no twist in the frame. And then they're actually parallel. I got my spacer down there. I can attach this one to the wall over here and uh, make sure that the distance is consistent all the way down.
I have the laser just skating past the edge so you can see on the face where it's hitting. And interestingly, it's fairly well straight and plumb all the way up to like here, and then it goes <laughs> So my, uh, my piece is probably has like a little tiny subtle curve in it that's indistinguishable until you put a laser on it like that. I think it's pretty good right where it is. I'm gonna double check things real quick and then screw it into that cabinet and screw it into the house. I have the laser set to two and an eighth off of this face here. So that should put the laser just in front of that upright there. And then I can look past it and make sure that the, uh, the second upright is actually parallel and in plane with the first one. And if we zoom in there to the top, you can see that it needs to go back uh, quite a bit. Okay, that is set in place. I will come back probably when we actually do the fridge and put some more blocking back in here. But in case something has to change with this, when we go to set the fridge and put the panel on, at least there'll be less things to, uh, to remove. So this uh, gap here gets covered by this guy. And then when the, um, well, a piece this thick, when this casing is in here, we'll have an even, an even style on either side. So I'm glad I shrunk that one down a little bit. So this ends up as wide as this one when this uh, opening is cased. So that's it for the, uh, the fridge surround, I believe, for now. It's a big old fridge hole. <laughs> We're going to start on this uh, giant appliance garage cabinet next. So before I can go ahead and get this cabinet in here and start fitting it, I need to uh, patch this floor a little bit. So I left a lot of this chunk of flooring out of here in case they needed more room to get their uh, the gas line or the water line up here underneath here. But they didn't need that much, so they only cut this little bit of the subfloor out to be able to make this turn. So um, <laughs> of course my foot lands right there. So I need to at least fill that enough to support that foot. And then I need some filler here to support that back foot as well.
Okay, I think this one is as good as I'm gonna be able to get it. I have it sitting in here, it's perfectly plumb in this plane and in this plane, but I am out of level inside the cabinet on the shelf. Front to back it's fine, side to side I'm off by just like the tip of a shim essentially, so probably like a little more than a sixteenth. I'm not too worried about that because I can set the countertop in here at level. I can adjust for that with my uh, risers which are going here because this rail detail is going to continue under the countertop into this cabinet so it's not a big deal. I can adjust for that but I figured being, being perfectly plumb instead of trying to split the difference is more important here because I have other things like upper cabinets coming into here. I have the casings and the door jam on this side which comes into this cabinet. So plumb <laughs> feels more important than uh, level which if this was square to here this should be perfectly level if this is perfectly plumb but I think what's happening here is this cabinet is so big that it's just a little bit out of square and now I'm seeing it well, with my big square in the shop even with the tape measure you know you don't really <laughs> you can kind of check it but your level of accuracy isn't that great when it gets super big so I think we're just we're just seeing the exaggeration of the out of squareness in this cabinet but you know it's uh, it's correctable so I'm ready to scrap this thing to the floor. I'm going to do this a little bit differently than the other ones because it is so big. Um, I'm still going to cut the scribe with the knife so I sever the paint so I don't have any chipping issues. But I'm going to cut the feet in place and try that so I don't have to pull the cabinet back out, tip it back down again, cut it, tip it back up and put it back into place. If I can get it all cut in place for the most part, I'll have to shift it around a little bit to be able to cut everything. But at least I don't have to go through the process of standing the whole cabinet. Um, again. So that's sitting there where it's going to be. The, the scribes aren't too bad. They don't look as good as the other ones that I paired and hand planed, but they're uh, they're a lot better than coming in there with like a, one, of, one of these things. That's, that's for darn sure. Um, so I still have to attach to the wall and cut the holes for the receptacles, which are back here. So one thing I did before I put the cabinet in place is I had my laser, the level line was set to finish countertop height and then I also lined up one of the plumb lines to the left side of the stud here. That's going to show me where the stud is in here so I don't have to worry about like guessing where that stud is for securing this thing to the wall. But it's also going to give me the line for the, the right side of the boxes and I have my measurements over here on the wall so I can come off of the finished countertop height. Now the line I have marked in here is the old finished countertop height before scribing. So this line here is where it was before. So if I put this block on here and mark my new line, that is the new finished countertop height. And I can use my measurements to find the bottom right side of every box of two boxes and cut the holes right in place. So the first one is four and a half inches up. This is the bottom right corner of that box right there. So we're going to cut a double gang box right there. And then the other one is 20 and a half inches up. And 
defenseman here, this single gang. So I can mark that out and then just pop a hole for the back here and that should line up pretty well. The nice thing about the boxes, the outlet boxes, is they got the cover plates that go on them. So you don't have to be super perfect or super clean or super precise with this, but you don't want to be like really, really far off either. And you know, because it's me, <laughs> I'm going to cut to the inside a little bit, verify that I'm in like the right spot, and then I can make my final cuts because it's me. to consult the tape because uh, the, stud state, the stud space doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but uh, there's a box. So there's a double where that box is and then the next one over is right there because this is where we cut our new opening and start framing it out. So it's kind of nice to have an extremely well documented build. So that's where that's going to be. Um, one problem running into is as I'm fastening higher up I go, it's trying to go back. So I need to shim the back to keep it from going back. Um, next time I have my air compressor up here, I'll shim it, pin the shims with some nails, and then I can actually tighten it up. Because if I go to tighten it up now, it's just going to try and pull it back. And it's going to pull me out of plumb this way and lift the front of my feet off the ground. So that's a small thing I can worry about later, but at least it's here and it's all set to go. And we've been kind of talking about this cabinet for a long time now because it sets the location of a lot of things going all this way. So with this thing finally here, the staircase can be finished because it goes right into this cabinet. This opening can be finished because its jam is set by the casing, which is set by the location of this cabinet. And then that continues over here that determines the final width of this casing as placement. These stairs can't go in until, oh, sorry, this column can't go in until the stairs are here. So like all the trim from here over can be done now because this one cabinet is finally here. And I just want to circle back to one thing on the fridge surround, which we talked about a long time ago, back in the beginning when we were making this thing. And that is that seam right up here where the, uh, I don't know, the style meets the rail. So this one was painted, and then as I expected, as I did the install, got tweaked just a little bit. So that is a hairline crack in the paint joint there, which is what I was expecting and talking about before. That one's a little bit nicer looking than this seam over here, which is just a butt seam. Now that one, you have a much more noticeable seam. This one here, it's a, a prettier looking crack or seam, I guess, than that one. Just a small detail that I had uh, in my mind this whole time. So I can either touch up that connection later when I install the, uh, the crown and paint it again. But that's kind of the coverage you'd see. We have this small shadow line that's, you know, three inches long once the crown's installed. Don't know if I'll care or not, but we'll deal with that when I get there. And then when we get there, we'll actually probably attach this to the ceiling. Yeah, just a little bit to further attach it to the building. So that's basically it for the installation of the lower base cab at the main run here. From here, all around to there is technically ready for uh, countertops, which is super nice. We got our bookends in place and just you start feeling like, oh yeah, this is, uh, is kind of thought out <laughs> in a sense. 
So uh, I think next time we're going to hop into the pantry, finish up the lowers in there. There's just two lowers that go in there. That one has another fun weird door that I have to figure out how to do. And uh, other than that, it should be fairly uh, straightforward other than we're going right into a wall-to-wall -wall space with no real uh, you know, areas for fill, I guess. And then once that's done, we'll get this island built and put here. And then that'll wrap up my first little round of cabinetry. And we can get, hopefully, on the, uh, the countertop people's schedule and start moving along with that. While well, I start on the uppers in the range hood, and then that upper, and then the upper in the pantry, and then all these drawers, all these doors, and um, that's it. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the kitchen thing, whatever this is, yes, yeah, the kitchen, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.